a God's eye view of the 40 mile desert. I'm using the term God's eye in the literary and artistic sense of a view from above at the scene below. In this case, the eye is a GoPro camera attached to the tail of a light plane flying about 2,000 feet above the ground at 125 miles an hour. We're looking south towards Fallon, Nevada. This is the uh, Carson River route, part of the California Immigrant Trail, where one of the largest human mass migrations in history happened. About 300,000 people. From here, the Pleistocene shorelines of ancient Lake Lahontan start to appear and become quite obvious. The lower shorelines are about 10,000 years ago. The medium shorelines are about 13,000 years ago. And the highest shorelines represent lake levels at 18,000 years ago. These are in the late Pleistocene. There were many other uh, lake levels. The Pleistocene went back to 2.6 billion years ago. There's a nice Pleistocene beach there where the waves from the west were pushing into that cove. the Mopung Hills, where the Okala Indian Caves are. There's also several other Indian Caves that go back to 11,000 years ago. Paleo Indians had beachfront property there. <laughs> 18,000 years ago, the Mopung Hills was an island. The California Trail. Carson River route ran along this side. doing a 45 degree one and a half G turn to get over the Humboldt Bar. There is often water right here, but this has been a very dry couple of years. The Humboldt Bar or Humboldt Dyke is about 107 feet high and divides the Humboldt sink on the left from the Carson sink on the right. A canal drain was cut through the 
dike in the 1930s as part of a reclamation program. The Humboldt Dyke is 107 feet high. The Southern Pacific Railroad made another cut through the dike in 1902 to get the reroute of the railroad through this desert. Next to this is the Central Pacific Railroad grade that was put through in 1868 for the first transcontinental railroad. Making another 45 degree bank. Hold on. The Big Meadows was the last stop for grass and water for the pioneers. From here they had to make the 40 mile desert with no water and no feed for the animals. In order to have feed they had to start in the spring when there was forage which put them here at the worst part of the year to cross in the summertime. Ragged Top Mountain, a huge caldera that blew its top. Coming over Trinity Junction overlooking Interstate 80. On this side of the valley, the California Trail split to take the Truckee route, which went over through current day Reno. This is the route that the ill-fated Donner Party took. The straight line is the old highway 1A which was a, a gravel road, really, that connected Fallon with Highway 40 at the current side of Interstate 80. Now we can see the straight route that the 192 Harriman realignment took. At that time, they had steam shovels and a little more power than the old Central Pacific which had to be done with the help of 12,000 Chinese workers using hand tools. Now, coming over the intersection, of the Union Pacific Railroad and Highway 95, where in 2011, an Amtrak train was struck by a gravel truck. This area has been called the Trinity Triangle for the history of unfortunate, weird events, starting with an immigrant grave for every mile of trail. Then there was the Trinity truck stop murders in the 60s. In the 90s, there was a Nevada Highway Patrolman murdered. And then there was the uh, Amtrak in June 2011, where six people were killed by just a very strange 
collision that really hasn't been explained adequately. Over the site of Double Wells, which is a still a historically marked site, sometimes the pioneers made the decision to go to the other side of the valley to take the Truckee route. The Humboldt River ends at the Humboldt Sink back there. The Humboldt River is an unimpressive river, what they would call a stream back east. But historians have called it among the most important rivers in the United States because it allowed the immigration across Nevada to California and Oregon. Looking down from a high, I am reminded of some of the people who crossed this, like John Hawkins Clark in 1852 said, about 10 miles out, the dead teams of 49 and 50 were seen scattered here and there on the road very soon. However, they became more frequent and in a little while filled the entire roadside, mostly oxen with here and there a horse and once in a while a mule, wagons, wagon iron, ox chains, harness, rifles, and indeed all the paraphernalia of an immigrant's outfit lay scattered over this notorious route, reminding one of the defeat of some great army. And John Wood, 1850, wrote, But the destruction of property and stock is and will not be all. Hundreds will toil on this far and then leave their bones to bleach on the great American desert. And the worst of it all now is to see, every few hundred yards, the grave of some kind brother, father, or mother, and even some who have not been buried, but have probably been forsaken when sick or faint, and left to die and waste away in the winds and rain of heaven. Since the 1960s, I have crossed a considerable amount of this area on the ground and have been fascinated by the geological and human stories that the terrain revealed. Herman Melville, author of Moby Dick, was of the same generation as these pioneers. His protagonist, Ishmael, I believe, was in a scene looking at the calm ocean in a beautiful sunset, but knowing that below the surface were sharks and other beasts of the deep. He said, the world is a magnificent and terrible place. So is the world in this place.